Okay, let's start off with running. You guys know the drill. And then punches. Keep your feet moving. I don't care what punches you do. I do jab, cross, hook, uppercut just because it makes sense to my brain from a warm up point of view. <clears throat> but as long as your hands are up and your feet are moving, I don't really care what punches you do. Okay, then feet, you're here. Step out and in. Something back there is squeaking. knees. Now when you do this, think about keeping this one bent. It helps you keep your balance and it puts more stress on that leg so you're doing more work. Other side. ladder steps. So visualize a ladder or if you have an agility ladder and you want to put it on the floor, but you're stepping through the rungs and then picking your knee up. So you got to pick your knees up. Even if you have a flat, like a agility, my agility ladder is plastic slats with a, like a, not a cord, but it's flat, just a flat rope. And if you don't pick your feet up, you get them caught. Kicks, front, side, back. And if you get your feet caught and you screw the rope up, then you have to do more because you don't get to cut your time down because you messed up the ladder. Okay, so what you need to do now is you need to turn the video off and start the music playing. And while the music is playing, you're going to do two more rounds. 30 seconds each, running, punches, in and out steps, knees, ladder steps, kicks. Two times through, 30 seconds each. Now when you're done, turn the video back on and come back to me to stretch. So to stretch, reach up. Over to one side. Other side. Put your hands here. Clasp your fingers together. Push your shoulders back. And lift your hands. And then reach for the floor. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. Now with your feet here, relatively close together, turn, I have both heels on the floor, my knees are straight, pull your chin down, your chest down to your front knee. Normally we do this stretch much more extended, but with your feet close together, you get more of a stretch in your hamstring. Make sure you keep your chin up. Then push back and stretch your hip flexor. Mid center, toes straight forward, knees out. Grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. So chin is up, then turn your feet, keep the knees straight, keep your chin up, chest down towards the front knee. Push back, stretch your hip flexor. 
Then have a seat. Put your bottoms of your feet together. And then take your hands and tuck them right up against your back here so that you're not end up, you don't want to scrunch your back like this. I actually, my feet are sliding, so I'm going to put them against the, chair, the table and then put my hands here to keep my back straight. Now the sun is in my eyes, so they're closed and push your knees down. And then you have to put your feet out, come over to one side. So what I'm doing here is my ribs are coming down towards my thigh, They're coming to the side. Then you're going to come up and you're going to turn the front of your chest towards your knee and reach out and grab again. And same thing on the other side. Turn towards your knee. Now we're going to reach to the center and when you do this, I don't want you to do this. Okay, I want you to lift your chin and push your chest forward so your back is flat and reach your elbows toward the floor. Okay, if you've got that and it's easy, pull your feet in closer and still reach your elbows to the floor. And then if you need more, put your feet together and put your elbows on the floor on the outside. And pull your feet in. Heels are on the floor. Rock back and forth. Okay, this is easier. Feet apart, knees apart. Toes pointed straight forward, feet closer together is harder. Put your hands down. Straighten out your legs. And up. Okay, three exercises. Um, I'm going to show them to you. And then again, I want you to stop the video, turn the music on, and do each one of them for a minute. Okay, the first one, I'm going to, I think you can see me okay. The first one are inchworm push ups. So you do the inchworm push ups. You start here, you bend down, you put your hands on the floor, you walk them out to the plank. You do a push up. You walk them back in, you stand all the way up. Walk them down. Okay, you can do them on your knees if you want. In either case, your back has to be flat and your chin has to be up. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is toe touch sit-ups. <clears throat> so you're gonna start here on your back. I'm straight out. I'm gonna come up. My right hand is gonna touch my left foot. Then my left hand touches my right foot. So opposite foot down. Okay, and the third one is a lunge front kick. So what I want you to do is I want you to step back to the lunge and then ideally right from here up to the front kick and back down on the same side. So ideally your foot is only touching in the back. Okay, if that doesn't work for you, here, 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 and down. Okay, so like I said, stop the video, turn the music on, a minute each, into our push-ups, toe touch sit-ups, and lunge front kick. Okay, so this month we're working on intensity. Um, we're gonna do some kicks right now, and then work on adding intensity to them. Okay, so the first one, grab a chair for this, to start at least. Okay, so the first one is gonna be a side kick. I want you to hold your chair to start because I want you to look at your standing foot and turn it towards your chair and then pick your other foot up like this as if it was on a step in front of you. So if my target's there, my knee is chambering 90 degrees off the target. I'm going to turn my butt and my heel towards the target and kick. And when I do that, this you can see better from this angle. I'm not just putting my foot out, but I'm actually pushing from my hip. Okay, so the push, the rotation is where your power comes from, and the, po the power is what's gonna give you the intensity in your kick. So let's do some on each side. I actually leave my foot facing in the same direction as my knee when I chamber, and then when I turn my hip and my butt to throw the kick, I turn the foot. So one, 
two, three, four, five. Now let's do the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then you can get rid of your chair. Okay, the next one we're going to do is a spin axe kick, but we're going to start with the regular axe kick. I'm going to write... Why is down low so you can see my feet? Okay, so when I do a regular axe kick, chambers like a front kick, knee comes up, comes across your body, opens, drops down, heel hits the target. Okay, so when I do a spin axe kick, so when I do the front, the axe kick, my knee is facing my target when I chamber. So when I spin, what tends to happen is people spin here and pick up their knee here. Well, if you're doing a front kick chamber, and your knee is there, that means your kick is gonna be there. My knee still has to be here. Now, if you look at my feet right here, don't twist them up. Right here, you're way off balance. So I'm gonna start here, turn, drag, pick my foot up so it's facing the target, throw my ax kick. Okay, so turn, drag, kick. So that's two, three, four, five. Okay, then we'll do the other side. Actually, I'm gonna turn and do the other side here so that if you're confused, looking at me, you can follow along with me. So in my right guard stance, I'm gonna kick with my back foot, which is the left one. Spin, drag, Pick my chamber up towards my target and kick. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so that's two kicks. The third one is gonna be a pump instep kick or skip instep kick. Last week, we worked on an instep kick. This week, we're gonna add a pump to that. So if I wanna close distance, I'm gonna pump with my back foot and kick with the front one. Just as if I was throwing a pump front kick, but we practiced the, the uh, instep kick last week. We practiced coming up. So your foot, your toes are pointed, you're kicking either with the top of your foot or the base of your shin, it's a groin kick. So I'm coming forward, pick up your back leg, switch feet. Pick up the back leg, switch feet. If you're gonna follow along with me, I pick up my back leg, now the other one kicks. Pick up your back leg, that's the chamber, other one kicks. So you're gonna go pump kick, pump kick, pump, kick, pump, kick. Okay, then what I want you to do is I want you to get a partner. Okay, and that partner is going to be the person who's giving you the intensity level that you're working with. Okay, so if you're an adult or you're doing this, get one of your kids to be your partner, they will get a huge kick out of it. You can either have them call out numbers from one to 10, or you can have them write them down and hold them up, whatever entertains them. But you're gonna do these kicks on a scale of intensity from one to 10. So one is no intensity, okay? It doesn't mean sloppy karate. All the parts still have to be there, okay? But there's no power. There's no rotation, there's no speed. I know I have trouble taking out the rotation particularly. But I want you to think about when we're doing it without intensity, practicing the technique just setting your foot on the target. No, not hard enough that if you hit anything, it would do any damage, okay? So then the person's gonna tell you what intensity level. One is no intensity, 10 is intense as you can be without making any noise. I don't want any key-ups in this drill. I just want you to throw the kick with intensity so that I can see 
or who's ever watching you can see that if you actually hit the target, you would do some damage. So each kick, 10 times, um, you have to do 10 times on each side, 10 times total, 10 side kicks, 10 spin axe kicks, 10 pump instep kicks, each one somewhere on that intensity level. And don't start at one and go up to 10, mix them up. Go one, nine, seven, three, 10. So go up and down. Okay, um, white belts this month are doing basic form two and orange belts and blue belts are doing K-On Shona. Okay, we're gonna work on the three quarter turn that's in both of those forms. Okay, so three quarter turn, you start with your right foot forward, left foot moves, you turn, you always your left foot moves, you always turn counterclockwise. So I'll, and I'll do it facing in all the directions so you can follow along. But my left foot comes in, my feet come together. My left foot steps out to the corner behind me and I turn. Now I'm gonna do it here in this orientation so you can see my feet when I finish my turn. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my feet together. Feet are gonna come together. Left foot's gonna come out to the corner and I'm gonna turn. So when I get here, I'm in a proper wide jingle chassis. What happens if you don't bring your feet together? Okay, I'll do this one sideways because I want you to see what my feet are doing here. People tend to come here and step straight through. And when that happens, if I come and I step straight through like that, when I turn, my triple chassis is not wide enough. Okay, so I have to start here, bring my left foot in, make a quarter turn, take the left foot, bring it to the corner behind me, and turn. Okay, so if you're doing this following along with me, I'm here, my right foot is forward, Left foot's back, left foot moves, I turn counterclockwise. So I'm turning my right shoulder towards my left shoulder. Left foot comes in, I make a quarter turn. Left foot comes to the corner behind me, I turn. Then I step through. Left foot, I have to keep shuffling because the space isn't quite wide enough for this. Left foot comes in, make a quarter turn, bring it to the corner behind you, turn. Make sure when you do, your triple chassis is wide enough. Step through, three quarter turn. Okay, then we're gonna add hands to that. So we're doing this from a high block. So I start here with a high block. As my feet come together, my right hand comes down to my hip. My left hand, actually no, I'm doing a, I'm doing a three quarter, I'm doing a low block. So my left, my right hand is going to come down to my hip. My left hand is going to come up to my ear. So I'm standing here like this with my feet together in a full cross body block. Left foot's going to turn to behind me. And I step in low block, step and punch. Okay, left foot comes in, right hand drops to the left hip. Left hand comes up to the right ear. Left foot to the corner behind, turn in low block. Actually, I'm going to step in high block, not step and punch. So I'm going to do three quarter turn box. One, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, so then we're going to take a technique from each of the other forms and work on the technique. And as far as the techniques go, you can do all the techniques. It doesn't have to be from your curriculum, techniques or techniques. Okay, so what we're gonna pick from Chosung Hero is a line drill. Okay, so we're gonna start, I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna step in that direction. I'm gonna go low block, center block, punch, high block, low block, center block, punch, high block. Okay, so now if you watch these, every technique is driven by rotation of my hips. So I start here, step the chungal chassis, rotate my hips to the low block. I'm going to rotate, you can rotate your toes if you want to. I don't, you're just wasting time if you do that. But I'm chambering my hips, rotating my hand, rotating my hips away, rotate into the block. Then on the 
punch. It doesn't come way back here, but I'm pulling this shoulder and hip back a little bit so that it's a rotation for the punch. And then I rotate, again, I'm not rotating my feet, I'm just rotating my hips away to the high block. So low block, center block, punch, high block. Low block, center block, punch, high block. Low, center, punch, high. Then I want you to go backwards. Low block, center block, punch, high block. Low block, center block, punch, high block. Okay, and I want you to do that going back and forth. That is from Chosang Iro, which is the form that the green, brown, and red belts are doing. Okay, then we're gonna do a technique from row high. Okay, you guys all know how to throw a back leg crescent kick or front leg crescent kick. Doesn't really matter, I can do it from the front leg too. Okay, but your knee comes up in a front kick chamber. Your foot's gonna make us going outside to in, makes a circle back to your knee. The rotation actually comes from my hip turning. Okay, but we're gonna do a variation of this that makes it much harder for you to generate that rotation. So I'm gonna start here in a tiny little cat stance. I got about 95% of my weight here, and this foot is just touching the floor. So I'm gonna chamber this foot up and do a crescent kick. Okay, so there's not a lot of hips here. I turn them away a little bit and back in a little bit, but I'm gonna do crescent kick here. One, two, three, four, Five. Okay, if it's easier for you, put a hand there. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, but what you need to focus on is that your weight's here. So basically what you're doing is you're kicking here. You're just putting this foot down in between to re get your balance and to give yourself a platform to work from. Okay, next technique that we're gonna do is from Pilsan. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna be focusing on stance, okay? This is a cat stance. This is not a cat stance, it's a rear leaning stance. Okay, so when you do a rear leaning stance, you start in a sofa or chassis, toes out horse stance. I'm gonna take this foot and turn it a little bit more front and take this one and turn it a little bit more out. Okay, I'm not moving my heels. All I'm doing is rotating both of my toes that way a little bit. Then I'm gonna shift my weight, so 60% of my weight is here, and 40 of it's here. There's no weight on this heel. My heel's on the floor. Okay, so I'm gonna shift from one to the other, and one to the other, and one to the other. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna block. I'm gonna do low block in a rear leaning stance. Then the other side, low block, low block, low block, low block. Then I'm gonna do a center block. Center, 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 center. Low, 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 center, 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 okay? And then we're gonna take one technique from Dragon on the Rock. And the technique is supposed to be in the form. It's a high block and a hook punch. But what I want you to think about instead is instead of a high block, I want you to think about being really close into your opponent. And this forearm is gonna come up under their chin, lean their head back, leave their neck open, and then you're gonna rotate a hook punch into the side of the neck. Okay, so in the form, there's not a lot of rotation. In the form, you're focusing on keeping your body straight. From a self-defense point of view, I want you to think about rotating your hip into the first strike and rotating further into the second strike. So block, strike, or strike. Chin, side of the neck. Chin, side of the neck. Chin, side of the neck. Then the same thing on the other side. Chin, side of the neck. Okay, then I want you to go back to all of these and pick a target. 
Okay, if you're practicing with somebody, that's even better. Okay, if you're working by yourself, I want you to think about going from a high block. We're gonna interpret this three quarter turn as a throw. Okay, so you come up under somebody's chin, reach around, grab the other side of their ear, and throw them. The strikes here, I want you to block a kick, block a punch, punch, come up under the throat. You're seeing a theme here with the up under the throat. Okay, so put somebody there and do that. Then for the, well, the crescent kick, I just want you to get a target there and practice throwing the crescent kick, controlling your body and coming right back to the same spot. And then with the technique from dragging on a rock, I want you to put an attacker there. Well, victim, you're gonna be the attacker up under the throat, punch the side of the neck. Okay, I have two self-defenses for you to do today. One of them is meant to be a ground defense, okay? So I'm gonna show you standing up on the wall for now. Um, because the beginning part of it, without the throw, the reversal, the BJJ reversal, it really does make sense also as a standing choke defense. Okay, so we're going to come over here. And I'm here. Okay, and somebody is leaning up against me and choking me. If you were doing this on the ground, they would be kneeling between your knees and leaning over and choking you. But they're here now, they're choking me. Two hands here. So I'm gonna bring one of my hands up under theirs and lift this arm a little bit and push down on this hand. So the hand that's here I'm pushing down on, which is getting their thumbs out of my throat. So I lift one and push down the other one. Then I'm gonna bring this hand up and I'm gonna cup my hand like this. And when I do that, I'm smacking them in the ear, in the side of the head. And if you hit somebody really hard in the side of the head, right over the ear with a cupped hand, the change in ear pressure can actually, an air pressure can actually pop their eardrum. Okay, so you're gonna come here, you're gonna trap, make a little bit of space, hit their head really hard, pop the eardrum, come follow through, elbow them in the side of the head, come back again, elbow again, and take your fingers and rake across their face. Okay, so I'm here. Somebody's right up close to me, they choke. I bring my hands up between us. They come up between their hands. So under this one and over this one, push down and lift. Cup your hand, pop the eardrum, elbow to the face. Come back, elbow to the other side of the face and rake the face. Okay, ideally find somebody to practice that with you. And then the other one that we're gonna do, this is called it's called double lapel grab with pseudo smash. And it sounds, I taught this in class the other day. One of the teens was very disappointed that you don't actually grab the lapel. You start the self-defense as they're coming to grab the lapel. And she thought the pseudo smash was gonna be like a cool over the head throw and it's not. Um, somebody's coming running at me to choke. The goal here is to not let them get close enough to choke you. You're gonna bring your hands up inside theirs this way and break the choke as they're coming at you. Then you're gonna turn your hands and your palm heel is gonna hit them in the top of the pack. So find your collarbone, okay? Right underneath that, that's the spot that you're hitting. And you're not just pushing your palm heel. You're, this part of your hand hits and you, you're, it rotates. So the strike is here. When we talk about power coming from rotation, it has to start here, in and out. So as they're coming at me, I bring my hands up. They rotate out to block. They catch their hands and I come through the center and strike. Then I'm gonna spin, jump. It's supposed to be jump back kick, but that's blind. I can't, I'm not doing a blind kick. I'm gonna jump spin side kick. Okay, so here they're coming at me. I do it at an angle like this so you can see. I'm gonna step back, break the choke before it actually hits me. Palm heel, jump, spin, side kick. It's supposed to be a jump, spin, back kick. Problem with the jump, spin, back kick is I can't see it. And when I, when I do a back kick, if I do a side kick, I can do a spin side kick here. My back kick tends to be there. And if I can't see it, I don't want to kick anybody in the knees. So I'm either going to not jump 
or I'm going to look, which makes it a side kick. So they're coming at you, break, push, kick. Okay, find somebody to practice both of those with, please. Okay, we're starting off with one stick. We're gonna do blood cup on the left side. I'll, we're gonna, we started this last week, we're gonna do all of the left side today. So you start it with it in your right hand, all the way at the bottom, switch, left hand is on top, so you have empty space at the bottom, so you can use the other end of the weapon. I'll do it in both directions. We start here, blood cup, courtesy, step back, cover your head, make sure it's covered. This is not covered. Cover your head, step forward. Strike high, low, high. Orbit, when you do the orbit, it's like you're wiping the sweat off your forehead. Strike, stick keeps spinning in the same direction. Your left foot, it sticks in your left hand, your left foot's gonna follow it. Step back, cover your head again. Step forward with your left foot and strike down. Okay, so the first three strikes in this set are ticks. Tag, tag, tag. The orbit, and the last strike come all the way through. Okay, so I start here, blood cup, courtesy, step back, cover your head, step forward, high, low, high, orbit strike, comes around, it hits, it orbits again, but this time your foot comes with it, cover your head, step forward, strike down. Okay, that is for beginners. Um, so in the kids class, white belts and blue belts, if you're a green, if red belt in the kids class, you need to be practicing it, tongue sudo, white, orange, blue. Um, then everybody else, bring it up, needs to get their other stick. We're gonna do the other side of the bottom today. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. So I'm mirror to you. You have the stick in your left hand out and the stick in your right hand tucked up against your side. So I'm striking down, left, right, left. And I'm gonna bring it back to this side. Left, right, left, and back. Left, right, left, and back. Okay, then I'm gonna bring it back here. So now follow with me if this is easier for you. Left, right, left, and back. Left, right, left, and back. Left, right, left left and back okay i would like you to practice both of those with somebody and actually you're going to, some of you are going to say well there's nobody in my house who knows this that's good because then you have to teach it to them and the best way to learn something is to teach it to someone else so i want you to practice those if you're a beginner you're practicing just the left side of blood cup everybody else is practicing blood cup left side and the two stick set left side bottom Okay, um, gup, bow form. So if you're in the Karate Kids class, all the red belts are doing this. Tongue shido, um, two and one stripe brown belts, red belts, apprentices are doing this. Okay, so right now today what we're working on is a technique that's part, of, it's probably the hardest move in the form. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start in right jungle chassis. And I will do this both ways so you can follow along. I start the right jungle chassis and I end in a right knee. Okay, so I'm gonna pick my right foot up, swing it around, put it back down in the same spot, and put my left knee down. Okay, it goes a little bit faster than that in the form. In the form, what I do is I turn, I kick the right foot up, I put it down, I put my left knee down. So it goes this way. Don't slam your knee on the floor, it hurts a lot if you do. Okay, I'm here, right foot comes up, comes around, I put the right foot back down, left knee drops to the floor. So I'm going from a right front stance to a right kneel. Start here, up, spin, left knee down. Here, up, spin, left knee down. Okay, then you're gonna get your bow or your stick if you're working in the house, and you're gonna put it in your hands the way that we always do. Right hand palm up, left hand palm down. I am going to take and strike across so that my left hand is under my right ribs. I'm gonna bring it up. It's gonna, it goes over my head when I do this, but if I do it over my head, you're not gonna be able to see. Bring it here, switch my grip. So my right hand is down and the left one is up. 
and then I'm going to bring the left hand, the right hand to my left ribs. Bring it up, switch it back to normal hand grip, left hand, right ribs. Bring it up, switch your hand, right hand, left ribs. Okay, so when I do this, it actually comes up over my head. And if you watch me do this at speed, I hold it between my fingers as I come around. I, if you have a death grip on it all the way around, it doesn't flow nicely. But if you're doing it fingers, I tend to do fingers on one hand and a little bit more of a grip on the other hand. You don't want it flying across the room either. Okay, so I start here, normal grip, left hand on right ribs. Comes up over my head, switch my hands, bring it down, right hand, left ribs, bring it back. So left hand, right ribs, up, and switch. So once I've switched, my hands are in the opposite grip. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this together. So I'm starting here in the right front stance. Bow is in a proper grip, left hand on my right ribs. <clears throat> I do that jump that we did, and at the same time, I switch the bow to the other side. We come back, up, switch, jump, and land. Come back, up, switch, jump, and land. Okay, if you've not done this before, you might have to run the vid back, rewind the video and do it six or eight or 10 times, that's fine. That's after learning how to handle the bow without tripping yourself up on it, that's probably the next hardest thing in the form. So spend a lot of time on that this week. Okay, black belt bow form. Um, I'm gonna give you a couple more moves, but then I'm gonna go back and give you a drill that I want you to do from it. Okay, so this part we did last week. One, wrong hand. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Okay, so we're just gonna add a couple moves to this. My left foot is gonna index in and step out and I'm gonna block. So my block is here, I'm in a rear leaning stance. Then I'm gonna take my right hand. Right now my hands are in a normal grip. Right hand palm up, left hand palm down. And I'm gonna turn my right hand so it's in the opposite grip. So I'm here, turn my hand, and I'm gonna strike across. So my right hand is on my left ribs. In the basic bow form, when you turn your right hand, you also turn your left, and this one not. Okay, I'm coming here, so they're both gonna be palms down. So last week's piece finished here. I'm gonna come here and block. Switch my right hand, step out to front stance and strike. Okay, but what I want you to do right now is I want you to find somebody in your house. If you are, if you have a pretty chrome or shiny tournament bow, find a stick out in the yard to practice with. If you have a pine bow, you can do this, but be gentle. If you have a rattan bow, you guys can tool on each other. Okay, so I want one person with the bow and one person with the stick. And I want you doing these blocks. So your partner's coming across at 45 degrees. And I want you blocking here. I want you blocking here, here, okay? Partner striking and you blocking. If you can do the dance in the form, that's really nice, but if you don't understand what you're doing or you can't use it as self-defense, it's not really useful, it's just the dance. So I want you to practice, somebody strikes, somebody strikes, somebody strikes. Okay, once you've done that a bunch of times, if you want to strike, block them, and then hit them, well, not hard, that's cool. But I want you to practice those blocks, figure out what you're doing.